Welcome to the show. This is a talent special. I'm Rob Brown, your host, and I am thrilled to have with me today a talent and workplace expert, Marina Koymans. Hello to you. Hi, Rob. Happy to be here. And I'm so honored that you invited me to do this uh, call with you because I, I see a lot of your calls and I'm really happy to be there myself now this time. Well, Marina, talent is such a big deal in the workplace. Uh, why is it such a challenge? Well, in today's world, talent management or talent in the workplace, it's a challenge because it's all about reskilling and upskilling. And why is this discussion so on the forefront of every chief people officer or CHRO or whatever? For me, it's a logical flow. It all comes from change and, and the world is changing rapidly around us. And there's a lot of uh, disruption uh, and there's an ever-changing marketplace. So for me, there's no discussion about the importance of upskilling and reskilling because it's no longer a nice to have, it's a need to have. Hmm. And uh, the, the change, I was, I was mentioning change. For me, it's mostly technology-driven change uh, in combination with innovation. That's what we're working on at HLB as well. Uh, at the heart of our, our new strategy, 2024-2027, is innovation. And if you want to stay relevant in a marketplace, you need to adapt and you need to work on learning and development for your people. So that's why learning and development, reskilling, upskilling is close to my heart. Well, that's what we'll talk about today. When we mentioned the word innovation, though, it's not usually associated with accountants. It's associated with the technology industry that serves accountants, but accountants themselves, double entry bookkeeping has been unchanged for thousands of years. So how innovative do you feel accountants are as a breed? Well, to be honest, as a breed, I don't think they're really uh, innovative, but at the moment, that's changing as well. That's another sort of change. I think the people in our network, in our in our firms, the, the members of our network are really changing. And like I said, it's it's no longer nice to have, or but it's a need to have. And it, there's also a need to change if you want to stay relevant for your customers and customers are changing as well. So the marketplace is changing. And it's not only uh, at, at today, it's not only about technical skills, uh, sort of professional skills like accounting, tax advice, and those kind of things. Because a lot of a um, lot of the information at the moment, it's available to our customers, sometimes at a push of a button. So the reskilling and upskilling needs to be in the technology area, but also in the what I call human skills. I really hate the word soft skills hmm. because they're not soft at all for me. So those kind of skills groups are really important to, to pay attention to. Of course, all the CPAs do their, do their technical training, do their professional training. They want to be the best uh, in, their, in their job, in their, in their kind of uh, accountancy or, uh, or tax. But I think being, being really relevant for your uh, customers then it needs more. They, they, the customers are asking for, that's also a buzzword, but I, I don't have a better solution yet. The trusted advisor, uh, I think we have to work on that. It's definitely a case for relevance. I completely agree with that. Make a distinction for us between reskilling and upskilling, Marina. What is the difference? Well, the reskilling is is really uh, something completely different. Uh, when you look at, um, for example, um, surveys from uh, the World Economic Forum, you see that there, there's a need for definitely new jobs, and that's really reskilling. Leave your current job and go to another job. Upskilling is what can you do from your current job and your current role and how can you develop yourself? That's for me the difference. So different jobs, but climbing climbing the ladder. So as part of a skill strategy, maybe for a HLB or for a particular accounting firm, uh, why do they need something like a skill strategy? Because skills enables organizations to be so much more flexible in adapting and changing to 
to the needs of the workplace. Skills are smaller. For me, we are also entering uh, the era of the end of job descriptions. The, and we were talking more about roles and roles are built from skills, from smaller parts. It's no longer, and for me, it has never been, but I think it's a tradition. It's not in my job description. I cannot do that. I cannot, I cannot do in a different job because it's not in my job description. And that's about reskilling and upskilling as well. And yeah. I think uh, the skill strategy is really necessary because it's completely different uh, for the organization talking about job descriptions instead of uh, talking about skills and the combination of skills and different roles. Internal mobility plays a part, doesn't it? Just explain how that works for us. Oh, yes. Internal mobility is is, is hand in hand with reskilling and upskilling. Uh, we built a skills hub in our organization. Uh, it's built on the Degreed platform and Degreed caters for three elements uh, in, in skills. And that's skills development, internal mobility and data. So internal mobility also allows people to develop themselves and learn different skills in different environments. And because we are a global network, we're kind of promoting uh, the internal mobility as well. But that again, talking about the profession, talking about the industry, that's also sometimes difficult. Uh, when, when I think, oh, I have a great opportunity for you to, to really progress in your career. Sometimes people think, oh, well, then I need to go to a different firm or a di different, even a different department next door. That That's sometimes scary, let alone that we say, okay, what you want to do, we have that, but not in your country. You, you have to move maybe one or two years to a different country. And for me, it seems natural because I'm a traveler <laughs> uh, all around the world, but I think we need that as well because we can learn so much from not only different skills, but different cultures. And that's also adding to your career. So internal mobility, internal mobility is key. It's key. And we have the, the skills hub and that caters for all, all those things. But luckily the newer generation coming in, they're now asking for secondments. So I'm really happy about that. Of course. So, yeah. And it's not just good for the accounting firms and the networks and the associations. It's good for the individual to enhance their personal brand, to increase their career mobility, their career capital, if you like. That's important, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that makes them more valuable for the for the marketplace as well, mm. you know, for the for the labor market. I'm uh, a lot of partners in the network think if I say something like that, Marina, why do you say that? We want to keep our people. But I think if you are good for your people and you let them develop themselves, they will be the ambassadors for your for your organization as well. And after mm. a while, maybe they could come back. It's kind of the fluid uh, labor market that we need to um, to work with as well, especially in these tight labor markets that we have. Well, let's talk about some of the skills that accountants need to rework and up work if you like let's take aside technical skills you're right they're all doing those that is the very foundation yeah. but there are other skills and competencies that should be part of any skill strategy or framework what are they yeah absolutely uh we have built our framework uh, uh over five skills groups we have the the technical skills of course then we have the the kind of digital skills because the technology uh, is kind of key for everything. And then we're talking about uh, data analysis, AI, cybersecurity. That's the second group. Uh, then we have what we call uh, advisory skills. It's, it's about business acumen, uh, uh, advisory skills like uh, customer focus, like uh, the art of asking questions. Um, critical thinking, also very, very important, critical thinking, and also curiosity, problem solving, problem solving, that's what customers want from us, problem solving. Uh, the third one is leadership, because nothing without good leadership uh, in the organization, and that's about having a vision, future focus, change management as well, social and cultural awareness, 
And I think storytelling is really important for leaders, not only just clear facts, they're, they're, in, they're important as well, but storytelling, telling a, telling a story, tell us something about yourself. Mm. And uh, the fifth uh, group kind of bucket we, we have in our framework is human skills and human skills like uh, ethics, integrity, um, things like um, persistence, but also the art of learning yeah, it was the art of asking questions, but also the art of learning, because learning is, is kind of a skill on itself. Learning new skills is learning as well. Learning uh, and also communication. Communication for me is the oil in the machine. So it's 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 a complete broad framework that we have built in our in our organization. An accountant sh should not have any problems learning new skills or upgrading their skills because they've passed very difficult exams. We know they can learn. We know they can study. We know they can acquire new knowledge and expertise. So. Is it easy to get accountants to upskill and reskill, or is it actually difficult, even though we know they can learn? Yes, no, it's actually very difficult because they they're very, they feel very comfortable with their knowledge, what they've learned uh, hmm. during their CPA study. And I agree with you, it's a tough study. And some some people have, need multiple exams and multiple uh, times trying again over and over. I think... A lot of accountants are kind of persistent <laughs> because they, they, they want to pass that exam, but they're feeling a bit out of their comfort zone with the other skills groups, especially uh, with the human skills. Of course, they're all human. Well, at least I hope so. I'm not sure about bots and AI anymore <laughs> <laughs> if I look at my colleagues, but let's let's say they're, they're human. They, they, they think... They feel out of their comfort zone. That That's also for, I mentioned leadership. A lot of our leaders are great leaders, leading their firms to growth and, and reaching their business targets. But if if I say, okay, you have a problem with retention, actually, it's very easy. Be nice to your people. Talk to your people. And then they kind of, Marina, oh, that, that's, that's out of my comfort zone. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, for example, when I when I give them advice, check in regularly with your people, especially in the remote and hybrid workplace that we have now. Check in with your people. Yeah, I cannot just call them and say, how are you doing? That, that's not business. Yeah, well, that's business, and that's an important yeah. part of your role. Business is personal, they say. It all comes down to relationships. Absolutely. Yeah, accountancy, of course, it's all about numbers and accounting and those kind of things and counting. But actually, you are in a people's business. <laughs> Let's look it's at how we business. acquire skills, Marina. In the old days, if I can say the old days, you would be <laughs> in some kind of classroom or training room and there would be a trainer there and they would show you new skills. You'd go to a workshop. Now we have online workshops and online learning and LMS platforms and everything else. A lot of learning is done on the job. You look over the shoulder of a partner or someone more senior than you and they coach you through things. Yep. Some of it's done by osmosis, we say. You just pick it up as you go along naturally without any formal learning. So tell us about what really works in making skills stick. Mm -hmm. I think all of uh, that, I guess you would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, and uh, and I would say all of that because there are so many different ways, multiple ways of learning. It's also personal. Some people, they learn via videos. They think, OK, they're very visual. They like videos. Mm. Other people read books. And what works very, uh, very well with, within our organization, within, within our network, is the, the audio books like we are now having a headset, etc. It's it's audiobooks because then you download something, you start uh, with your, for example, fitness, and you at the same time you listen uh, to uh, to learning, and that works very well for for some people. So it's it's kind of a blended approach. We 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 still do uh, classroom training, but most of the time for technical skills, to be honest. And when it is about communication, because you need other people, communication is a two-way street. But for a lot of e-learning, um, 
it works very well when you have your own responsibility. So that's what we do with the skills hub. We are empowering our people to be responsible for their own learning. So it's not that your manager says you have to do this, this kind of course. No, you can be responsible for your own learning. So you can point out the direction you want to go in. You want to develop yourself, talking about reskilling and upskilling, mm. the, the, the direction you want to, to go with your, for example, reskilling. You say, I'm, I'm an accountant now, but maybe... I like to go into more technology advisory. That's kind of the future. Uh, some people think, I think so too, but uh, some of the colleagues in our network luckily think that way as well. Whose responsibility is upskilling? Maybe the individual accountant, they will take on a skills program or they will decide they need skills in certain areas. Sometimes it comes from the chief people officer, chief talent officer, L&D, HR, Sometimes it comes from you, maybe as a network, HLB. Sometimes it comes from your boss. So who is driving the skills agenda? Well, it, it starts with our strategy. The new strategy is, is driving the direction, overall direction of where we want to go as an organization. So that's why I said innovation is at the core of it all. And around innovation, we have built several pillars, um, and that, that's the direction we go. And then next step is that people are responsible for their own development. So if they if they want to go along with, with the HOB network, obviously they need to, to know something about innovation, uh, of course, because that's really key to our strategy. But in the end, for me, individuals are responsible for their own development because then they're really committed, I, mm. I think. So, and as an as a chief people officer and responsible for learning uh, as well and reskilling and upskilling, I can only set the conditions and make it possible. That's why we built the skills hub, and everybody in our network has uh, access to the skills hub. And if, whether you use it, it's up to you. What will happen to those accounting professionals who will not upgrade? their skills or say I'm too busy to upgrade my skills, they, they can't do it. What will happen to those people? Well, over time, we were talking at the begin, beginning of our, um, uh, of our talk about relevancy. In the end, they will become less relevant for their organization and less relevant, of course, for their customers. And if you look at the research from the World Economic Forum, looking at the decrease in demand for a certain uh, jobs, certain roles, actually, it's kind of scary. And I tell that a lot within our organization, but it's not me, it's the World Economic Forum. Uh, actually, uh, on uh, number four, it's uh, accounting, bookkeeping, and payroll clerks. And number, no, that's number three. Number four is accountants and auditors. Over time, the decrease in job demands, they will be kind of disappearing, the pure uh, accountants. So of course they will grow hopefully into the trusted advisor role. But I think just the people who want to stick to their roles over time, they will be re replaced by more adaptable, more flexible people who want to do more and broaden their role. What role do you feel the regulatory bodies, the professional associations need to play in setting examinations and curriculum for people to become qualified accountants? I think that needs to change as well, because now it's really focused on, on, on the professional skills, on the technical skills, but pure yeah. technical skills. So if I were in their shoes, I would also reskilling re and upskilling put in that curriculum of the professional bodies and, and include more human skills, more advisory skills, definitely, because then the connection between uh, the education and the jobs we, we require, are, it's more easy. Well, we're coming to the end here, Marina. We've covered a lot of ground with reskilling and upskilling of the accounting profession. Is there anything you would like to add about how important this is and how accountants and accounting firms can upgrade the skills of themselves and their people? 
Yes, I think a strong learning culture. Culture, uh, learning needs to be in the DNA of everybody. So a strong learning culture and, and people development and learning and development, internal mobility can make all the difference for a firm and uh, especially in a tight labor market and also a changing world around us. I started with change and I will end with change. The world is changing. So organizations that make learning uh, and development a priority and a part of their purpose, another important wor word I think of their purpose can improve their success in attracting and retaining talent. And in the end, in being successful and reaching their business goals as well. So that's my summary of why it is important. That's excellent. Maria Koymans, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you all.